So I think I found it, probably the best affordable mid-range tablet that you can get right now is this right here. It is the Lenovo Shaoxin Pad Pro 2022 model, otherwise known globally as the Pad Pro 2022. So what is on offer here is really fantastic for the price point. We do have a 11.2 inch OLED screen. Now this OLED screen is 120 Hertz HDR 10 plus, supports Dolby Vision, and we've got four JBL tuned speakers, Dolby Atmos on board here, an 8,200 milliamp hour battery, 30 watt charging, it runs Android 12, and it's all powered by the new Companio 1300T from MediaTek. It's an excellent chipset, it's got six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage with micro SD card support. So pretty much everything you'd want in an affordable tablet, including an optional keyboard and stylus, which unfortunately I don't have. Here is our box. So obviously this is the import version. I got it from a company called Giztop and it's called the Shaoxin Pad Pro or the Pad Pro 2022 edition. Now just quickly, I'll show you the rear of the box. You can see that it's got HDR 10 plus, Wi-Fi 6 certified, JBL sound, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos here, and of course powered by that Mini MediaTek 1300T chipset. My version here has six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. So included inside the box, we've got our power supply, which is 30 watts. Now we'll charge it in just over an hour. I'll give the exact time in this video. We have a micro SD card slot tool there. So there's no SIM support with it. Uh, just a few little bits of paperwork here that of course all is in Chinese and they do give us a 3.5 to type C adapter. Now, why is that? Well, obviously, because there is no, sadly, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with this particular model and a Type-C to Type-C cable. So let's take a look at the build. We've got an 11.2 inch OLED screen, 120 hertz, a maximum of 600 nits brightness. It does look very good. The bezels are okay. They're not super slim. We've seen tablets now, of course, with slimmer bezels, but for this price point, I think it's perfectly acceptable. So it is about uh, 480 grams and 6.8 millimeters is the thickness of it. So it's thin enough. Now it's a plastic frame all around the outside. And I think this here also feels like plastic. Now I've intentionally not cleaned it. You can see it's an absolute smudge magnet here. I think the design compared to the previous year's version actually looks a lot cheaper and the way they've done this camera too. So it's a 13 megapixel camera. We do have an LED flash. The good news about this camera is it does have autofocus. And here's just a few quick samples. So these two samples now are of the rear 13 megapixel camera and then the front facing camera. This one is eight megapixels. Later on, I'll give you a video sample too from it so it can shoot in 1080p. So we've got the Lenovo branding here. This is for, I think, the area for the stylus to charge that. Unfortunately, I don't have the keyboard or that stylus this time around, just the tablet itself. On the top, we have two microphones, volume up and down buttons. They feel like they are made out of plastic. And when you take a look at the bottom right here of it, you'll see the Pogaport pin connectors and then the little holes there for the stays for that optional keyboard. Now I've used the previous gen keyboard and I think it's basically the same with this model here. So it will be a good keyboard from Lenovo. Highly recommend getting it if you are gonna type a lot on your tablet. We have two of the JBL tuned loudspeakers, our power button and then the micro SD card slot right here. So there's no SIM support with this model. So great, we have the expandability with the storage, we can add more but we do not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as mentioned, which is unfortunate. Though this here is a full spec type C port, which is great. So video out, high speed data transfers. And with the video out, we get their desktop mode, or you can just use clone display. We've got the other two then side firing JBL speakers. Lenovo's gone with an excellent, basically flagship grade panel here for a tablet. So 11.2 inches. It is, of course, a screen that is an OLED. So blacks do look very deep. Nice colors here. I do have it set to their vibrant mode, but you can put it to standard, which does tone down those colors. Now, touch response and gestures have been very good with this screen. I really haven't had any issues. You can see there. Again, look how good those blacks look. Now there's no light leakage, there's no bleeding too as well with this screen that you don't see 
what you see with the IPS panels is you see the leakage coming in around the edges. Not gonna happen with a screen like this. And of course, 120 hertz. So we do have adaptive brightness. We've got double tap to wake. You've got lift to wake as well. And you'll see here under color, we do have your standard options there. So they have by default vibrant, but I would probably run it on standard, but I've just kept it on vibrant here because that's how you get it out of the box. You can adjust the white balance there or even just tweak it a little bit more if you wanted to do so. So great set of options in here. Now this OLED does not have a DC dimming option anywhere. However, you see that there's no banding. I don't see any flicker with this screen. So it does look to me like most people, if you're very sensitive to OLED or AMOLED screens with flicker, I don't think you're going to have an issue with this particular panel here because it is very good screen that they've gone with here, Lenovo. It is really basically a flagship grade screen in what is really like a mid-range tablet. Now the UI here that it runs is their own ZUI 14 based off Android 12. Now you see that we've got of course here the Companio, it's the 1300T. Very good chipset from MediaTek here. You'll see later on, it doesn't get hot. It's very good, the performance we get out of it. Six gigabytes of RAM and the security patch level is July. Now I know a lot of people will probably be asking me this, so I'm just gonna point it out that yes, updates are working. I know with the previous models, Firmware updates did not work. They are taking, they are working here. They flash over, so that's really good. Bug, bug fixes are coming through from Lenovo. So the ZUI, I have not been a big fan of in the past. This one is actually a little bit better. Performance is very good. The whole interface, the UI, the tablet, feels uh, more like a flagship tablet than it does really a mid-range one. And of course, it's selling for a very good price point, around about uh, 300 US dollars or so for the spec, I think is good, the screen we are getting. Now I wanted to point out that there's a lot of little extra things in here you do get from Lenovo, but one of the ones I really do like is this. In battery here, you will find that there is a, of course, battery saver mode, but we've got optimized charging. Now, if you intend to hang on to this particular tablet for many years, you wanna get the maximum battery performance out of it, do enable these. So battery maintenance mode or the battery protection mode as well. You can turn that on and it's gonna really increase the longevity of this particular tablet's battery. By the way, it's 8,200 milliamp hours, which we do have with this model. So the UI overall, I like the performance. It seems to be stable. There's no bugs. Firmware updates are working. And yes, Google Play and Google Play apps, all of that is working. Another thing with that UI is I do like, if you wanted to multitask, for example, you select one of the apps that it's going to support. So Prime Video, hold it down. And then you can just pull down. You can go between having free form, you'll see, split screen or lock the app. And I find that's actually quite an easy way to do it. So Freeform now, I can have it windowed. You can do this. Now we've only got six gigabytes of RAM, but you can see the performance of that app seems to be just like having basically like a little phone screen right here, which is good. So you can do that with the other apps if you simply just swipe up. Okay, you bring them up again for an app that is going to support it. So let's take a look at maybe 3D Mark is, maybe not. Uh, you can even split screen that too as well. And you can adjust the size you want that to be for the apps that are going to support it properly. I can see that one isn't. Oh, it's because it wants me to run another here. So you can have, of course, like Chrome open. Now, for some reason, Chrome doesn't want to install on this because of the Chinese ROM. It didn't originally come with Google, but install Google Chrome beta. That's working and the performance is really good. And you can see here, I've still got that app there running in the background, which is great. And then you can do the floating apps too. So it is quite a good tablet for multitasking. And just to mention that the ROM performance does seem to be very smooth and fast and snappy. Occasionally, if I'm doing a bit of heavy multitasking, I've noticed that some of the animations can be, you can see a little bit juddery, a little bit jerky, but normally most of the time it is quite quick when you're swapping over between different apps. Task Manager doesn't seem to kill things off too quick, which is good. Now, what about bloatware applications? There are a few to start with, but you can thin them right down. You can remove pretty much all of them, but occasionally, you may see a few notifications and some things until you block it in Chinese. So it'll take a day or so of using it to clean it all up. Once you do that, you're really not gonna see any Chinese, which is good. So these are the stock apps that you do get once you remove all the other garbage on there. There's just a few of them. There's not, it's not overly bloated, so it's not bad there. And as mentioned, you just need a little bit of time to clean that up. So the battery life, the runtime here, this is at 120 Hertz for a 8,200 milliamp hour battery isn't bad. So eight hours, this is a fixed test that I compare with all the other, of course, tablets I do review. 200 nits of brightness, 
It's not a bad result. Uh, if you want, of course, over 10 hours of runtime, around about 11, then do run it at 60 hertz, if you don't mind 60 hertz. Now the charge time with that included 30 watt charger is not bad at all. To go from 16% to 100 took only 68 minutes. Now you can see here with Antutu that it's stating after, this is after about four charges, that my battery capacity is more like seven, just over 7,000 milliamp hours and not the 8,000, well it's supposed to be 8,200 that's in this, but this can be sometimes a little bit off, so don't take that as being uh, an absolute exact figure for our battery capacity. So running N22, this is uh, version 9.4, you can see that it's a very good performance we do have with it. So almost just shy of 600,000 points. GPU is particularly powerful there too with it, which is great. It's got the Mali G77, it's the MC9 version. So it's very potent. It games really well, this tablet, as you'll see later on. But does it throttle? Well, this test here that you can run on your own, say, Samsung S22 Ultra, you'll see that those phones will throttle down 30%. But here, this particular chipset, which of course is completely different to what is in those flagship phones, doesn't throttle really at all. It's only, well, it's under 2% that it loses. You can see from the top score to the lowest, this is after 20 minutes of pushing it, the GPU really hard, fantastic performance here. So no throttling. It maintains that performance when you game, you don't see it start out really fluid and then just drop right off. No, not at all. So for the price point, this tablet really does offer a lot. It also does have this GPS with a hardware compass. So if you wanted to use this for navigation, Google Maps or other nav programs, maybe you're a boaty, you can use this tablet because it's got a bright screen. You can see outside accuracy down to one meter. I'm indoors and it still has some of these in the green when it comes to signal strength. But when I go out, this is right up into the 30s which is very good. It did take around about a minute and, well, just under a minute to get this lock here, but great, it does have this, which is another bonus. So really what it's missing is just the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly, but it's got everything else, including that display out with the Type-C port. Now, if you plan to use this for an ebook reader, this is Google Play Books that I'm using. It looks great. The screen is sharp, the text doesn't look blurry and I have been using it for a couple of hours reading on it and I didn't have any problems with my eyes, any strain. Of course, with the Google Play Books, you can uh, invert the text. You can have a black background, white text if you wanted to do so. You've got blue light filter. All of that good stuff is there and holding it, especially in portrait like this, I find is comfortable. And remember, it's only 480 grams, so the weight of it is not too bad. I'll just quickly show you PDF files here. They also look very good and the performance is good. You can see it won't be the fastest. You occasionally see a little bit of page loading. So it's not iPad quick, but again, very good. And thanks to the OLED screen, it just looks really stunning. Whatever PDF files you are reading on this Shellshin Pad Pro or the Lenovo Pad Pro 2022. As for 4K demanding videos that you might want to be playing on this, you can play them, okay? But I just ran into a problem with the codec for sound. So a Jellyfish 10-bit file, this is a 140 uh, megabits per second, so it's very demanding, but look at how it plays this back. This is even better than Windows 11 Pro Core i7 laptops that I'm testing out. There's no judders, there's no stutters at the beginning. It looks really good, but there is uh, no audio coming through because of the codec problem. So what you need to do is install VLC player, then you'll get sound. You can play 4K files really without any problem. This is another 4K clip here. Now this one does have the sound and it is going to work properly. So it really does seem to handle everything I throw at it when it comes to video files. It's just some of those audio codecs it won't like. So use via VLC to get around that. As for audio, well, we've got those JBL speakers. There's two of them either side. You can sometimes block them when you're holding it, but we have the speakers at the top. So it's a bit hard to block all four at the same time. They do sound excellent. They're rich. They've got a bit of bass to them, really good volume, and they are definitely above average speakers. So here is a sample, just so you get an idea what they're like at 100% volume. Wow, yeah, those are really good speakers. I don't think anyone's gonna be disappointed by them at all. And by the way, YouTube playback performance, yes, you can run this at 1080p, no problems.
So if you do intend to game on this, or you're going to be buying this for someone that would like to game, perhaps a, a child or you want a son or daughter or something, don't worry about the performance because it is excellent. It's very good. I'm really not noticing any lags, and the performance here is close to that of what I would call flagship performance, really, even though this is a mid-range chipset. So this is Genshin Impact. If you're not aware of this game, it's got console level graphics. It's super demanding. Yet, this tablet handles it quite well, no real problems. I've got it on the highest possible setting, 60 frames per second, and it's looking very good. And as I pointed out with 3D Mark when I did that extreme wildlife stress test, that it will not run into really any thermal throttling. So the performance you get when you start playing is the performance you're going to have the whole time, and it really barely gets warm at all, just a little bit here on the back of notice. So PUBG, uh, Call of Duty, all of those games are going to run really well here on this Shaoxin Pad Pro or the Pad Pro. Okay, so this tablet just cannot be beat for the price point. Around 300 US dollars, 330 US dollars. You've got 128 gigabytes of storage, micro SD card support, 120 hertz OLED screen that's bright up to 600 nits. It's got HDR10 plus support with it, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, JBL speakers, large battery capacity, decent battery life with it, video out, it's got a compass, it's got a GPS, it pretty much has everything that you would want in a tablet, especially for the price. Now why would you even look at some of the other Chinese brands that I do cover, like Teclast or Chewy, you just wouldn't. Some of those models sell for 280, 260, 250 US dollars, you're better off spending that little bit extra getting a quality machine like this. Now sadly, I don't have the keyboard, I don't have the stylus, but I can tell you now from my experience, using Lenovo's keyboards and their styluses, their M pencil, their precision pen, sorry, uh, in the past, that it will be good. So there'll be good optional accessories. If you wanted to get those, you've got that option, which is really good. So what are the cons? It can't be all positive, right? Otherwise, this must be a sponsored paid review. I can just see some of the comments already. Well, it's got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That's one con. The build quality has kind of gone backwards. Uh, with the plastic frame around it now instead of metal, the backing on it being plastic, but it's high quality. It does not feel cheap. There's no creaks or flecks in it. It is a quality tablet. So there really is, for me, no cons, apart from you could say uh, another one would may maybe be the UI. Z UI there from Lenovo. Uh, this time around, I didn't actually find it to be too bad. It seems to be well optimized and the firmware updates are working too, which is very important. So if you're after an affordable tablet, you don't have a huge amount to spend, but you don't want something that's under 200 or 200 US dollars, they're normally garbage, get this. It comes highly recommended from me. I give this a huge thumbs up from Lenovo. They've really done it at this price point, just so much on offer. So thanks a lot for watching my review here of the Lenovo Pad Pro 2022 model. It's known as globally, or the Shaoxin Pad Pro 2022.